Um, next we said we we're gonna talk about immigration, I guess. What's 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 your take on that one? Uh immigration. That's so I mean I, I think there's definitely a I think we have to limit who comes and who goes. Mm -hmm. Um, like I'm for things like DACA, you know, like, you know, programs like that. Um, I'm not for the wall. Okay. Right. I I don't think (laughs) the wall, you know, accomplishes, you know, too much. I mean, if you look at like borders of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, I mean, those are just open deserts that you're, you're just, it's, it's going to defeat the purpose to build a wall and it can just walk across, you know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, I've been stationed in Fort Bliss, which is in El Paso, which is a border town. So it's right on the border between Juarez and uh, America. And I mean, Fort Bliss in itself, the El Paso is a pretty nice area. But when you get down to those border towns, like it is rough. Yeah. So I guess, so you're okay with DACA and you're, so what, what I guess, are do you like think that we should like slow down the flow of immigration? I guess I can give like my kind of my stance. I don't like support like come totally open borders. I think that people should come through and then basically they get documentation like if they come here and they want to be a citizen they should come get documentation you know hook them up with the social security everything um but i think the process should be basically as easy as possible and we should let in basically as many people as we possibly can that's kind of i think i think the bigger problem is with immigration is what to do with those who come over and let's say like i mean it's probably a small percentage or i mean it's not a majority but like you know those who do get in trouble yeah. You know, because, you know, a, a lot of our um, agricultural, like a lot of those people that work in those industries, you know, they are, you know, they, they do come from other countries and they're the backbone of like the farming industry and like oh, California yeah. and all that. So, but like for the ones that, you know, get in trouble, like what, like, what do you do with them? I you think know, if- do you send them home right away? Do you, do you try them on American soil? I mean, they're not citizens. So like what rights do they have, you know? Yeah. Well, I guess it kind of goes to where you believe like kind of rights come from, because I think like the foundation of like the Constitution and everything was that rights are innate. You know, people have rights. It's not like the government that gives you rights. You're born with your basic human rights and that everybody should be granted those rights. And it's the government's job to kind of protect those rights. So I would say even if someone isn't technically a citizen, they should definitely be afforded all of those rights. What what would be your kind of stance on that? So my my question is, do you jail them here, or do you send them back to their like, so foreign So if country? someone commits like a a violent felony and they get found guilty from court of law here in the U.S., I think that's okay for uh, deportation to happen. But I don't think that that's rationale to stop people from coming in, just because I believe in you know innocent until proven guilty. Everyone's coming in with a clean slate, you know. So I think right. Um, see, I think that you ha- like. I mean, I just need some sort of justice, but like, I think they should be. You know, I think they should stay here. Okay. You well, know, okay. And, like. Be- because if they if you deport them like what's to say they don't come back you know yeah i mean at least if you jail them here you know you know you know that person is you know receiving the justice that they deserve interesting okay i see so where is your so then so you do you or do you not think that we should like restrict the flow of immigration right i mean i yeah i think we should restrict the flow i mean as in to like you know, people coming over here illegally, like, I feel like if you, you know, if you skip the process, if you circumvent the process, right, then, you know, you should go back. Um, but, like, h- how do you go about just deporting people? You know, that's, like, really the big question. Like, do you put them in, oh. in cages at the border? Like, do you, you know, do you put them on planes? Like, because if you were to put them on planes, just send them home, you'd have constant planes running from, you know, wherever to, you know, foreign countries with just loads of people. Oh, don't, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that the number of people that I think would be deported, I think would be very, very small if I had like my kind of saying thing. But you said, um, so people who come here through non-legal channels, you don't think that they should be like granted amnesty or anything? Depending on what country they come from, you know, obviously, you know, we give amnesty to certain countries that they come over as political refugees, you know, if their country, their country's in a civil war, you know, a time of war, you know, we grant them, you know, that political status, that a political asylum. But I mean, if they don't, then yeah, like, you know, I'm totally for, you know, sending them back and, you know, having them come over, I guess, a legal way. So does it like, um, does it stick out to you as like a problem? Like how difficult it is to come here? Like legally, it costs a lot of money. It can take a lot of time. I mean, there are people who wait wait years. It costs potentially thousands of dollars. Right. So, I mean, I I know that the process can take up to, I think it was like eight years and some of the longest they have and like thousands of dollars. Um. But how do you change it? What do you change about the process? To make it not expensive and you just let them come? <laughs> you just, 
I mean, what what are you saying? Like, what what are they doing? But I mean, for those like, eight years? like I mean, that I mean they have to like. So, like, what do you say? Like, they have to apply for states. They have to apply for state citizenship, right? So, like, do you apply them to states and say, hey, you can come over here into a state and you could stay in this state, or do you allow them to, you know, freely move, you know, around the country? I mean, how do we do it right now? I mean, if somebody is born in a state, they have free. They can freely move between states. Yeah. I think it's a I think it's a harder question, and I mean, like, I honestly don't have the answers to like, yeah, you know, how do you how, how do you fix that system? Yeah, you know, Definitely. because I mean that that that's the hardest part, you know, is like how how do we create a system where people can come over here, you know, freely? Yeah, I mean, the largest portion of immigration, the the largest problem of immigration that we have in this country is people overstaying visas. Yeah, no, exactly. Right. And I mean that that's how people, you know, get to get here. They get here, they get here legally through a process and then they overstay the visa. You know, and I mean like do we adopt, you know, I mean like I don't know if you know, but like Japan, they have a very strict immigration policy. Yeah, probably I wouldn't like, I wouldn't do what Japan does. <laughs> but what 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 do they do though? Like you can outline it. I mean like I I don't know like off the top of my head, but I know I think it's less than like five percent of like they they admit annually you know of, of immigrants allowing to their country and like i know in like um other countries like if you overstay a visa like they will arrest you and they will deport you yeah i mean it's i guess it's harder for americans because you know we just go to the embassy and, you know have that conversation with them um but i mean for a lot of like foreign people like when i was in korea you know like korea actually has a large influx of russians yeah right um so i know that's something that they kind of work hand in hand with russia like hey do we send that person you know back to russia because of the kind of government that they are in you know, maybe they're fleeing Russia and, you know, this is something that we have to work with. Okay. But I guess, so you're saying like, because those uh, countries have stricter immigration laws that we should also have stricter laws, or I guess, um, what was, uh, what I guess you, we should have, we, we should, we, we should have like stricter laws once we find out that someone violates, you know, their visa, you know, if they come here on a visa, like, you know, if, if they violate their visa, if they stay longer than their visa, like, I think we should send them home why well i mean if you overstay your visa then you're overstaying your purpose well but why 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 can't they just why can't we just let them come here though i mean what ideally like them, i mean them, theoretically let, let, let these let people them, are coming they're coming to work they're coming to do these things i mean it's not like people overstay their visas and then they're just like huh, i guess i don't do anything anymore they usually they want to keep their job they want to keep the community that they've built here um i don't really see why overstaying a visa is a problem like why we should why that's an issue so like i mean if, if you're coming here on like a student visa okay. right and you and, and you and you graduate college like that that is your purpose you have fulfilled your agreement with the visa yeah you know so if you want to then say you have to then apply for a different so i mean but like what, what is, what is the benefit of sending back someone who we now know is educated who is educated with our schools we know that they went to college we know that they went through this whole thing um what 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 is the benefit to the united states by sending them back I really don't view it as a benefit. I, I just, I view it as a contractual agreement between two parties. You know, if I, if, 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 if I come to your house and say, Hey, you know, I'm going to redo your floor. We sign an agreement that says, I'm going to redo your floor and I redo your floor. And then I say, you know what? I kind of want to redo your living room too. Yeah. See, but like, I, I gonna... see, but then, but see the reason why I'd have a problem with that is because I don't want you to redo my living room. I'm saying like, so what is the negative aspect of them staying, of them staying? Cause I get it. If someone, you know, yeah, I like, mean the reason I have a problem with you trying to do my living room is because I want re my living room redone, not because it violates a contract. There's like a reason I don't want it to happen. Yeah, I mean, so like, okay, so if they are here for a student visa, right, and they graduate, you know, whatever, and they fulfill that student visa, you know, and then you put them out into, I don't know. I mean, like, they're 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 not a citizen here. You know, what, I mean, no, like, I think I, they should be granted citizenship. What, don't we so you're saying what we, what we want we want people to come here get educated and then enter the workforce it's good for our economy it's good for everybody it makes everybody better right i mean i i don't i don't agree with that sentiment but like i i, I think i view it as more like contractually obligated like if i come to you and say hey you know i am agreeing to this you know once those parameters are met and once my deal is done i'm no longer in a contractual agreement with you you know if i want to become a citizen then i can provide that pathway like, i think I definitely think that the United States of America should provide a better pathway to citizenship, right? And that's one of the downfalls. And that's why people overstay their visas is because they come here on a visa and then, you know, they're like, hey, you know, I can't, you know, maintain this. I, I can't become a citizen. You know, we should definitely change those pathways. But once that, once that has been fulfilled, like once that contract has been, you know, completed, I mean, 
what is your purpose of staying here? I mean, yeah, you want to contribute to the economy, you want to get a job and, and, and whatever, but like you still have to go through the legal process to do that. You but why, why should the legal process be so difficult that they have to leave, you know, probably disrupt everything that they've built while they were here and then go through this, what we've already agreed upon is a pretty extended channel. Um, what, why is that a better system than them coming on a student visa than being allowed to stay here once they're there, once they finish? So like, I mean, so I, I agree with you that the pathway to citizenship should be different. Okay. Right. I, I don't think the pathway to should take eight years. So okay. if you did this, if, if you did student visas, if you said, Hey, student visas are four years long. If you okay. say, Hey, at year two, you can start the process to become a citizen. And then once you graduate and you're fulfill your visa, then you can stay. Right. Yeah. But if you don't do that at that point, you're making the decision to go home. See, I guess, I guess I'm more of a, a consequentialist on this because I just think that it is better for everybody if they're allowed to stay here. And if it's just the contractual element of it, I don't, I just think that I, I, I mean, I just think the system should be set up differently where they're, it's, it's such a streamlined process where they should be able to decide that they can stay here. I mean, yeah, I can, I, I mean, how, how long does that take? What's that process? Like, I mean, are you saying a year, two years? Like how, I think it how should long? Be, I think it should be as simple as, Hey, I want to become a citizen. And, it's and then you're just, a, it should be way easier for someone that's here on a student visa. We know that they've been here. We know that they've been going to school. It should be an even more streamlined process for them. I mean, think about to, it. To, be, to, be, to, be, to become a citizen is what you're saying. Yeah, of course. I, I think it literally should be as simple as, hey, I want to become a citizen. So I don't want to say my only thing, but well, what if that, what if they come from countries that when we comes to, when it comes to foreign policy that we don't align with? You know, what if, we, what if we invite, you know, people from China or Russia, you know, all these other, I guess, um, different type of governments, you know. I you worried about spies? Word. I mean, not spies. I mean, <laughs> I think they already got spies, spies here. If you really were, if they wanted the to get spies I mean, here, they would have spies here. That's definitely how uh, the Russians landed the Manhattan Project. You know, they had a spy and then, you know, they no, exactly. and that's how. But that was with immigration policy. So I don't think that we're preventing any spies with our current system. I think that if Russia wants to get some spies here, they're going to get some spies here. I don't think it's just about, I don't think it's about spies. I just think it's about domestic threats. What do you mean by that? So like if, if, if you allow someone, if you allow someone to stay, you know, and, you, and they overstay, like, I mean, domestically, what if that person, you know, decides to, you know, become, I don't want to say a homegrown terrorist because they're not homegrown, but what if they radicalize or what if they go down that path? Then, I mean, you, you really don't know. I guess that kind of goes back to the whole innocent until proven guilty. I, I don't, I don't really, uh, like the idea of ascribing any sort of uh, ulterior motives to someone just because they come from a different country. Right. I don't either. Ooh, but I'm saying, what is that? But I'm saying like, I'm saying after the, like at some point, if they don't want to become a citizen, they have, they, they should leave this country. Still why? Like, are they like not paying any taxes? Is that what you're worried about? Or no. Cause I mean, you know, you go to you know, a grocery store and you pay taxes and, you know, <laughs> that way. Like, I mean, yeah, I understand that. Um, but okay, so if you stay here and don't want to become a citizen, why? Why because, would they? Well, I think well, because I believe I've never actually looked into the citizen process. But I believe you have to denounce most citizenships to other countries. I could no, be that, wrong. That's, that's, I, I think that that's usually how it works. I think that once you be like, if someone you know some, from uh, Peru comes here and they want to become a U.S. citizen, I think that they have to denounce their Peruvian c citizenship. That, I mean, if they're if they're okay with doing that, are you like worried that they won't want to do that or something? I'm just worried. Like, I don't want to say worried because that's I guess that's the wrong term. I mean, like when you talk about when you talk about this, you're talking about like small fractions. Like, I definitely believe a large scale of people that immigrate to this country, they're doing so for positive reasons. Yeah. So, so like, I think if, as, as long as you can agree with that, like, I would say ninety percent of people that come to this country come here for to make their life better. I so probably really go, I probably go about, even higher, but yeah, go go on, go on. But really, we talk about like policies to deport people. You're talking about, you know, a small fraction, you know, who maybe don't live the best life, you know, within societal grounds. Okay, so like they're more prone to committing crime. They're more prone to you know, that that type of lifestyle. So. I'm confused. So you're saying this, this 10% that comes here, you know, they more likely to commit a crime or something. 
what I'm confused. What are you saying? I guess what's your what's your question? I'm curious. So like you're saying, what do we do about that ten percent? Yeah, I'm saying like what do you, what what do you do with people who you know come here and like you just you grant them like I don't understand like why why would you grant them citizenship? Because I think it's better for everybody. I think they should at least be allowed to come here. They should be allowed to come, stay here, work here, pay taxes, but then they're effectively a citizen. So I don't really see the difference. I mean, at that, yeah. I mean, at that point. I mean, if you grant them citizenship, they are effectively a citizen. No, no, no. I mean, like, they should be allowed to come here, work here, pay taxes. And then they don't, I guess, have to technically be a citizen. But I think that that process should also be pretty easy because there are certain rights that you don't get until you're a citizen. Right. I mean, like, voting. Yeah, like, voting. Like That's the biggest one. Yeah, I think they should be yeah, able to vote. Yeah, voting. Yeah. So do you, I have a question. Do you think that people who aren't citizens should be able to vote? Um, I mean, I, I personally, I think I, I would just make them citizens. If, it, if I could just wave a magic wand that they would just already be citizens. Um, but yeah, if, if they live here, if they've lived here for a certain amount of time, I mean, if someone's here on like a, like a week vacation and they happen to be here during our uh, election in November, I don't think that they should be able to vote. But uh, if someone's staying here for, for a long period of time, I think they should be able to vote. Even if they're not a citizen. Even they're not. I mean, we'd have to, you know, discuss how long. I mean, if someone's here for three years. Do you think that they shouldn't be able to vote? They pay taxes, you know. They're paying ta- they're paying sales tax. They're functioning members. So of if, if 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 someone's here like on a four year student visa, should they be able to vote? Yeah, student visa. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. No. No, why not? If they don't plan, if they don't, because you're vo- you're voting for something that you don't plan on staying long term. Well, but I see. Okay, well, you're the one that's making them not. I mean, I think people should be able to come with these, get a longer visa and everything. Like, I guess. That's so. Like travel visas should be extended. You know, certain. I mean, it should be longer. Yeah, they should be able to get travel visas for a lot longer. Hmm. I just think you have you, ha- you have to be a citizen to vote. I don't know. I guess that would just be. I mean, like if you Google how many types of citizens, I mean, how, how many types of visas there are, like permits of travel, like there is a lot of them. Yeah. No. Definitely. And like I said, someone here for a vacation, that fine if they don't vote. Um, but someone here working or as a student, I mean, depending on what age they are when they're here as a student, um, but if they're here in, for college, uh, then yeah, I think that that's fine. I guess maybe, maybe I could compromise and say, sure, not for a student visa, but a worker visa, sure, because I think that the policies directly affect them. So do you think there should be a time on worker visas on how long they'd have to work in United States America to vote? Mm, yeah, I mean, sure. If we made it like a, like a year or something, if they're just, if they plan on coming here for a couple months working, then that's, I mean, they, I guess they don't need to. So I, I, I guess my, okay, my question to you, my, my I guess a better question, because it'll kind of like, I guess, gear the conversation the right way. Your path to citizenship, what is it? You come here and you want to become a citizen. And that's it. So like, what's, what's, you, what's yours then? What's, because mine is, is so, so like, you know, it's let, very. Let, 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 let's just say a month, like you're here for like a month, you fill out paperwork. It's like, are you, are you equating it to like getting a driver's license? Sure. Yeah. In, okay, in, so in, I mean, like, do, I mean, like, do you run checks? Like, do you run background checks? Do you run, you know, what, like, what, what do you do? I don't think we, I don't think we need to run the background checks. No one's been proven guilty by any of our courts. Right. So you just, I mean, that is very lax. That is a very. I've never really. <laughs> I know it is. I, know, I've I've seen, I, I, I really don't know how to respond to that. To be honest, I've never really kind of encountered someone who has that no. viewpoint. And I've seen some um, some research. I could try and find it and link it to you. But um, that uh, open borders, it would effectively like double our GDP. And like I said, I'm not arguing for total open borders, but I think that it should be a very, very, very easy process. So who do you stop from coming in the country? I think that's a better question. Like, who do you stop? Because I mean, you're very open to no, no one, unless they've no I guess one. been unless they've been found guilty of some crime here. But I don't see how so you justify it's... stopping someone who hasn't committed any crimes by the laws that you recognize. That's why I want to. That's why I want to hear what your process is. To citizenship. Yeah. Or what do you? What do you think it should be? Who should we be stopping? What should we be doing? I mean, at the borders, like you obviously you have your, you know, like your, I don't want to say enforcement, but you have your agencies that do their checks or whatever. Okay. Um, I'm all for granting visas, like okay. student visas, work visas, professional visas. Okay. Um, I think in that time period, you know, you have to make a decision. Like, hey, do you want to stay here? Do you want to go home? Do you want to extend your visa? Um, I definitely don't think that should be hard. I think in America, we make it too hard. And we definitely make it, um, 
we make it expensive for a reason. It's 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 not it's not cheap for a reason. Yeah. You know, because they, they want to keep those people out of the country. Right? Like yeah. poor people out of the country. Um I think that is wrong. Okay. But I think I think if you come here on a visa and you and you stay, I think once your visa ends, like then I mean you are an illegal alien in this country. Like you should be, you know, like th- there's no justification for you to be here. Let me ask you that. Let me ask you this then. How actively should we seek out these people who are overstaying visas? So like you're talking about like ICE raids and like stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm getting at. Yeah. 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 Um. I I definitely so in, in my opinion it should be if you get pulled over and you run a driver's license or you run a visa and it's expired, you know, then that, 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 that is a consequence of your action, right? Like you live in America, you, you, you are a, a adult, you have adult consequences to your decision. Um, well, someone gets pulled down, over, they're not necessarily guilty of any crimes. I mean, right. Correct. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I'm not saying like, I'm not saying it should be like stop and frisk. Like, yeah. I'm not just saying Glad. Like, Glad I, should, that page. <laughs> Yeah, it shouldn't be just like, hey, let me, I walk down this, you know, street and I see, you know, a bunch of like Hispanic dudes hanging out. I think there are some states where that's how they operate, is they can do that. I mean, that's... It's wrong. I mean, yeah, it's, it's wrong. Yeah, it's yeah I mean, wrong. yeah, that, that's, that's wrong. But I mean, like, I, I, I'm on that viewpoint and I think a lot of people who are, I don't want, not in the Republican Party, because I think the Republican Party, I think they are for ice raid searching you know, like they're they're for actively kicking people out of this country. Yeah. Right. Um. I definitely don't think that. I, I feel like we could spend better money and put those agents to better use than to actively kick out people who aren't criminals. Right. Because you're right. They 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 do pay taxes. Yeah. Right. They they contribute to our economy. They contribute to our you know they contribute to our country's overall growth. Yeah. But I think I think as an adult, like you just have to say, hey, this is an agreement that I've entered in with this place, like once that agreement is done, I have to go home. You know, yeah. I mean, if you look at, I mean, like, I mean, if you look at like, I mean, obviously like Japan's immigration policy or like even in South Korea, like yeah. South Korea, like if you, if once, once your stay is up, you have to leave. Yeah, right. No. Cause they, they will arrest you and you don't. Oh, yeah, they're very, they're very strict over there. Right. But I mean, it's also a cultural thing. Like if you look at like other countries, like South Korea, if you look at Denmark, you know, I mean, just like those Nordic countries, because a lot of people like to, you know, glorify those Nordic countries, right? They don't have a lot of different culture outside of the white population. No, yeah, they're you very know, homogenous. It, yeah. And I mean, they keep it that way from their strict immigration policies. And that's not, some, that's not something in, in Native America that we have done. Are you saying that that's better that they do that? No, I'm saying it's easier for them to do it now. Because oh, yeah. they, 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 they've done it for a longer period of time. Yeah. Right. And nice it's America for what, I mean, past two hundred years has been very open to people coming to this country and, and working. You know, oh, yeah. if you look at like lo- lo- large scale developmental projects of our country, they were done by some former immigrants. Oh yeah, if you go way back, yeah, the, I mean, honestly way back the system used to be pretty much what I was saying. Like people would come, they'd get their paperwork and they'd be good to go. But I, I so I guess what you're getting at is like the fear mongering of, you know, the illegal alien, like raping and killing, you know, a family. Like, I think that is a fear tactic that the media has used to propagate their idea of what immigration should be. In reality, it's not that. Yeah, no, I think that those are all just scare tactics. I don't think, I think that it's virtually unfounded in any actual data. I think it's mostly just fear mongering. And you see it all over the world. I mean, there's places in Europe. I mean, that's what Brexit was all founded on was a, a lot of uh, worry about immigration. Right. I mean, yeah, because in the EU, you can travel, you know, from country. There, there are no borders. Yeah, exactly. They had, yeah. you know, similar tactics to what uh, people mm-hmm. use here. But I think that in terms of, like, policies that we would support today, I think that you and me are actually in a fair amount of agreement. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, but I think, I think the, de- the, defer- the issue is once your stay is up. Yeah, I think that that's where you and me draw a- Bit of a conclusion, and I get what you're saying about, um, you know, if you f- f- sign a contract, you should fulfill that contract. I totally understand that, but just from a uh, cost-benefit analysis, I don't think that it makes any sense to put any resources towards finding those people. 
Right. So yeah, we're not talking we like we're we're not talking like actively hunting people. Oh, but even passively. I mean, even passively. Say a police officer, like you said, stops someone for a speeding ticket or something, and they find out, oh, this person overstayed their visa. Um, that police officer is going to ha- then have to arrest that person, presumably. You're going to have to take them. They're going to have to hold them and then eventually deport them. I think that's resources that don't need to be spent and unnecessarily spent. Right. I mean, so uh, yeah, the, I mean, the, I think you and I large scale kind of agree on the same things, but when it comes down to like finer details, we disagree. How do you um, reconcile, I guess, believing in borders per se, um, but being a libertarian? Because isn't one of like the foundations of libertarian beliefs, uh, like free flow of labor? And that any inhibition to that uh, inhibits the uh, the free market and all its greatness. <laughs> isn't that isn't that like one of the foundations? Yeah, and, and uh, yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I think if if, if you are, I mean, I, I don't know. So I I've been around the world, right? So I mean, I could say there are a lot of people who take pride in their home countries, right? Um, and I think you know if if you're a citizen of that country, then you have, I want to say the right to make it to have your opinion on that way yeah but i mean like i, I think um i don't know I, I just you have to be a citizen here you know like you, you just couldn't <laughs> I, I like i i can't i maybe it's a poor job i can't articulate it in the right way or you know however um you would want to view it but i mean I, i'm not for you know the wall you know yeah. so if you want to talk about like free flow of immigration like i'm not for the wall you know, I I don't think a lot of libertarians are. Um, no, I think, I think very few of them are. Yeah, and I think you know, I, I think people are very open to, you know, people coming here, right? Because I mean, we bring in the greatest minds from all over the world. I mean, in the United States of America, like we need the world in like medical research, you know, medical cultivation, like you know, and, and groundbreaking technologies. You know, we are, if not number one, because I don't want to say we're you know number one, but like we're top three you know in oh, depending on what you're talking about for sure yeah so i'm not I, i'm not against people coming here right i'm not against the liberties of people coming here but i i think that it's again it's going to go back to that contract because that, that's what a visa is a visa is a contract between two partners yeah. you know it's a contract between that person and the united states of america like they're making a mutual agreement to say hey come here you know and, and spend time doing you know like a temporary worker a student you know physician like whatever like they're coming here for that purpose once that purpose has been fulfilled i want to say you have no purpose here but your purpose has been completed right so it's time to part ways as parties interesting okay all right and and you know i i definitely get what you're seeing i don't think i doubt i could change your mind in this conversation 